seven scan, the lungs and the legs are what get fatigued first, and then the mind goes after that. So if we can get our legs and lungs to fatigue as far as they can, and then our, keep our mind in the game, then we know that we can go just a little bit extra. Doesn't mean we're gonna play a whole nother game, it means that last 30 seconds, the last minute, that last two minutes, that's all we need. You do suddenly realize that you're breathing a little bit shallower than normal, that you're slightly more nervous than you should be, and, and it's a reminder, you know, this is a place where you did get nervous, where you were trying to think with great clarity. You know, as a young guy, I, I always thought that experience was completely overrated. This naivety of youth, as soon as you get that experience and you see the younger lads, you realize how vital it is to the success of any team, of players that have been there and done it, and that have that calmness about them when everyone else is panicking and everyone else is getting hot-headed. Emotions are high, but yet their exterior is steely. You can never really practice for being nervous. Nerves are nerves. Like You've got to be in that side, in that arena. What you've got to then uh, become good at and become disciplined and experience that is just being able to be disciplined enough to do the really simple things really well. What will make the difference ultimately in the the tight games and the big matches and when the pressure comes on is, is, is what's happening mentally. The top two, maybe it's the top two and a half, if you're lucky. From a physiological point of view, you have to be cool as you like because big pressurised situations, big pressurised moments take for very cool heads and clear thought. Every job you give everything you got and you can get on the next job. We attack, play what's in front of us, we take care of the ball, we're quick in our threes. It's the opportunity to still see 360 when the cloud's coming in with fatigue, with decision making, with the opposition being ahead or you being ahead, the clock's running one way, something else is happening. You've got to still think very clearly, you've got to communicate clearly and you've got to make the right decisions, you've got to execute them all, all under pressure. Now the top players are going to be able to do that. The teams that perhaps aren't used to that situation haven't got that resilience are going to be the ones that will get close but won't get close enough. You see the best players always turning up at key moments and making good decisions because as much as their heart is jumping out of their chest, they're very, very clear in their thought. You talk about different scenarios and situations which might be the last two minutes, might be the last play of the game, or it might be winding down the clock. It's what you have to do in that period which is really important and that's what makes a great team and that's what makes a really quality player is being able to break it down to that. And then in a big arena, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of distractions, no, that's all I need to do. I'll focus on that. If I take care of business, we'll be okay.